the walls of St. Mary's Hospital stood tall and imposing against the backdrop of the moonlit sky. It was a place with a rich history, whispered about in hushed tones among the townsfolk. Stories of inexplicable occurrences and eerie sightings had become a part of the hospital's lore, passed down from generation to generation. As I stepped through the imposing entrance, a chill ran down my spine. I had heard the tales, but nothing could prepare me for the palpable sense of dread that hung in the air like a heavy fog. My name is Sarah Evans, and I was a young nurse assigned to the night shift at St. Mary's Soul. S. Despite the warnings from my colleagues, I was determined to uncover the truth behind the rumors that plagued this place. The hospital itself was a labyrinth of hallways and dimly lit corridors, each one seemingly darker and more foreboding than the last. The walls were adorned with fading paintings of stern-faced men and women, former administrators and benefactors of the hospital, whose presence seemed to linger long after their deaths. One name, in particular, caught my eye. Dr. Jonathan Harrow, a renowned surgeon who had mysteriously disappeared under suspicious circumstances decades ago. Some whispered that his restless spirit still wandered the halls, seeking vengeance for a crime long forgotten. As I made my rounds, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Shadows danced at the edges of my vision, and strange noises echoed through the empty corridors. Every creak of the floorboards, every flicker of the lights, sent shivers down my spine. One fateful night, as I was attending to a patient in the dimly lit ICU, I heard a soft whisper in my ear. At first, I dismissed it as a trick of the mind, a product of my overactive imagination. But then, I felt a cold breath on the back of my neck, and a chill ran down my spine. I turned around, expecting to see a fellow nurse playing a prank, but there was nobody there just an empty hallway bathed in the sickly glow of the flickering lights. Heart pounding, I tried to shake off the feeling of unease that had settled over me like a suffocating blanket. But no matter how hard I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. As I continued my rounds, I began to notice strange occurrences happening with increasing frequency. Equipment would malfunction for no apparent reason. Doors would slam shut of their own accord, and patients would report seeing shadowy figures lurking in the corners of their rooms. I knew I had to do something to uncover the truth behind these eerie happenings, but I was afraid. Afraid of what I might discover. Afraid of what lurked in the darkness of St. Mary's Hospital. Desperate for answers, I decided to delve into the hospital's archives in search of clues. Hidden away in a dusty corner of the basement, I stumbled upon a forgotten box containing the personal effects of Dr. Jonathan Harrow. Among his belongings was a weathered diary, its pages yellowed with age. With trembling hands, I began to leaf through its contents, hoping to uncover the secrets that lay within. What I found sent a chill down my spine. The diary detailed Dr. Harrow's descent into madness in the months leading up to his disappearance. He spoke of strange visions and whispered voices that haunted his every waking moment, driving him to the brink of insanity. But it was the final entry that filled me with dread. In shaky handwriting, Dr. Harrow described a ritual he had performed in a desperate attempt to rid himself of the malevolent presence that had taken hold of St. Mary's Hospital. As I read his words, I felt a cold hand grip my heart. Dr. Harrow had summoned something beyond his comprehension, something dark and malevolent 
that now prowled the halls of the hospital, feeding on the fear and suffering of those unfortunate enough to cross its path. Armed with the knowledge contained within Dr. Harrow's diary, I knew that I had to confront the entity that haunted St. Mary's Hospital once and for all. Gathering my courage, I ventured into the depths of the hospital, determined to put an end to the terror that gripped this place. As I made my way through the labyrinthine corridors, I could feel the oppressive weight of the entity's presence bearing down on me like a physical force. Shadows danced at the edges of my vision, and I could hear the sound of whispered voices echoing through the darkness. With each step I took, the air grew colder, and the sense of dread that had been gnawing at my insides threatened to consume me entirely. But I pressed on, driven by a fierce determination to banish the darkness that had taken root in this cursed place. Finally, I reached the heart of the hospital, the abandoned wing where Dr. Harrow had conducted his ill-fated experiment. The air was thick with the stench of decay, and the walls seemed to pulse with a sinister energy. Taking a deep breath, I stilled myself for what lay ahead and stepped into the darkness. What I found there will haunt me until the end of my days. In the dim light of the abandoned wing, I came face to face with the entity that had been terrorizing St. Mary's Hospital. It was a swirling mass of shadows and whispers, a twisted abomination that seemed to defy comprehension. As I stared into its malevolent eyes, I felt a surge of primal fear coursing through my veins, but I refused to back down. With every ounce of strength I possessed, I confronted the entity, calling upon the power of Dr. Harrow's ritual to banish it from this plane of existence. For what felt like an eternity, I battled the entity, locked in a struggle for survival against a force beyond my understanding. But in the end, it was not brute strength or sheer determination that saved me. It was love. As I reached into the depths of my soul, I called upon the memory of all those who had suffered at the hands of the entity, the patients, the nurses, the countless souls whose lives had been cut short by its insatiable hunger. With a final burst of strength, I unleashed a wave of pure, unadulterated love that washed over the entity like a cleansing fire, banishing it from this world forever. As the darkness receded, and the light flooded back into the abandoned wing. I collapsed to the ground, exhausted but victorious. The nightmare was finally over, and St. Mary's Hospital was free from the grip of the entity that had plagued it for so long. In the days that followed, St. Mary's Hospital underwent a transformation. The shadows that had once lurked in the corners were banished replaced by an aura of hope and renewal. Though the memories of the horrors that had unfolded within its walls would never fade entirely, the hospital emerged from the darkness stronger and more resilient than ever before. And as for me, I returned to my duties with a newfound sense of purpose. Though the scars of my ordeal would always remain, I knew that I had faced the darkness and emerged victorious. For sometimes, it is only in the darkest of nights that we truly learn to appreciate the light. <laughs>